Hey everybody, welcome back. It's a very wet and cold day in Arizona today, so I thought we would just kind of hang in the house, or I would kind of hang in the house, and um, make a, a tutorial video on Fusion 360. And thanks to Paul for the idea for this video. I really appreciate you guys giving me ideas of things to do. So today what we're going to talk about is parametric modeling. How to create parameters and expressions and how to use them in our model. As you probably all know by now, I'm an old school kind of guy and I do things the old school way because, you know, that's how I was. they were taught to me. So let's take a look at this sketch and let's just pull this bottom sketch up and let's say edit sketch. And you notice I hard coded a dimension number into all of the to these three parameters and it works you know it, it if it's a very complex model it can make it a pain to come back and adjust different sizes so what parametric modeling does is parametric model modeling allows us to make a list of parameters wall thickness hole size height depth width things like that and then when we when we dimension something we just use that instead of typing a number in that makes things really easy to come back and change later. It also lets us tie things together because we can use equations, mathematical equations, in the dimension um, slot where we type our dimension in. So let's take a look at it. We go to Modify and Change Parameters. Now, you'll notice here that Fusion 360 is a uh, parametric modeling tool. Whether we use the function or not, it keeps a, a list of every Thing we make now it would be really tough to come back in here and modify them in here because how do we know what they are name d18 i don't have that stuff memorized you're not either but up here we have user parameters so let me show you one real quick let's just call this spice bottle and let's just expression is the number or the equation for what this is going to be so we're going to call it 48 because that's what it was and say okay and say OK again. Now let's go back to that that original thing I did down here and let's say Edit Sketch and let's zoom in so we can see what's going on. This 48, I'm going to double click it to dimension it. Instead of 48, I'm going to type in and I got the, it's going to pick it out of a list for me and there's only one in the list so that makes it really easy. And we're going to change this dimension from 48 to Spice Bottle, my user created parameter. And let's hit enter. And now you notice the 48 is still in there, but there's this FX in front of it. That tells it that the 48 isn't something I typed in. It's the function of a parameter. So let's stop our sketch. And let's go to this top row, the one I messed up. And that's this sketch. And edit sketch. This is the one I messed up and I accidentally didn't get it right and so my print didn't come out right. So let's just say I want this upper row to be a different size. So instead of typing in 40, let's say I want it 45. Instead of typing in 45, I type in and I pick my spice bottle. And now I just say minus 3 and hit enter. And now you'll see it's this 45 is a function of that parameter I just put in and stop sketch and now they're 45 on the top and 48 on the bottom I can come back into that bottom sketch and now I can change this I can also make this a function of spice bottle or even better I can come up here to modify and change parameters and now I can change my spice bottle let's change my spice bottle to 40 and OK. And now you'll see my lower holes are 40. And since I said spice bottle minus 3, my top holes are now 37. That's how you can come back in and change all this after the fact. On a, on a model this size, it wouldn't be daunting to do, but it would be time consuming. I'd have to want to um, be able to modify this pretty badly to do that rather than just create a new one. I think it would take about the same amount of time, be honest with you. It might take longer. But in one of my next videos, I want to make a box for my a little soldering iron and all the little parts that go in a little box with compartments and a lid. So let's get a head start on that and let's see what this looks like when we start it from the very beginning. 
So let's say modify and change parameters. And now I got nothing in it. I got a blank page. So let's type in and we're going to say, what are we going to say here? Let's call this box W. It's not W, box W. W E. <laughs> Box W, and we're going to call this 175 for our box width. I have no idea what this thing is really going to be, but it doesn't matter because I can easily come and change these. And we're going to make another one, and we're going to call that box D for depth, and we're going to call that one, yeah, let's call it 75. And let's make another one. We're going to call this box H for box height. And let's make this one 30. And like I say, you can put a comment in here if you want. So you can look back and you can see why you put that number in. Or why you put that equation in. But um, it shouldn't really matter. So let's make, us, let's make one more here. At least one more. Let's call this one wall. Let's call it wall TH for wall thickness. And we're going to call that 2. And OK. And I'm going to want compartments for this. Do I want to make the compartments a size? Let's try it. Let's see how it works out. Might not work out very well, but let's give it a shot. And let's call this one Comp 1 W. And let's say this is going to be 100 millimeters wide. And OK. Let's make another one. Comp D. Comp 1D, because I'm going to make more than one compartment. And this is going to be the depth. Let's call this one 50. And OK. And width and depth, do I need anything else? I don't think I do. I could make the height, but I got box height, so I don't need compartment height. So let's say OK. And now let's create a sketch. Let's create it on this bottom plane. I like that because I'm building for a 3D printer. The bottom plane to me is the print surface. And it just helps me keep it straight in my head. Plus, it helps you if I give you one of my designs. When you load it into your slicer, it will appear in your slicer the way I designed it to be printed. So you're not going to have a failure and come back to me and I'm say, oh, wow, dude, you should have rotated that 90 degrees. Not going to happen when I design it, at least unless I screw up. <laughs> so we have our sketch. Let's sketch a center diameter rectangle. We're going to click in our center. We're going to pull out. Instead of typing numbers in, what are we going to type? We're going to type in BO, and now we can see all of our parameters that start in BO. And this one's to be box depth, box D. And we're going to hit tab, and we're going to go up to the next one, and we're going to type in BO again. And this is going to be box width. And we're going to hit enter, and now we're locked in. And again, you see FX175 and FX75. It's a, that number is a function of our parameter list, not or a function of something else, not a hard-coded number. So let's extrude it. E for extrude. Let's click it. How, what are we going to extrude it? BO, and we're going to extrude it box height. And enter. And let's shell it, because we know it's going to be a box. Modify and... Let's say shell. Let's click on the upper surface. And how much are we going to shell it? We're going to shell it wall thickness. So WA, and there's our wall thickness. And enter, and now there's our box. Now if I want to change any of those dimensions, instead of coming back into those sketches, I come up to modify, and I come to change parameters, and there I have box width, box depth, and box height, and wall thickness. I can change any of them at this point. I can decide later on I want a four millimeter wall thickness and I say okay and now my walls are four millimeters. I don't want a four millimeter wall thickness so let's go back and put that back to two. And two and enter and okay and now let's put a compartment in. How are we going to put a compartment in? I know I want more than one and I'd like to make it easy to do. So I have some I have some numbers. Let's um let's try a let's try rectangles. I don't know whether that's gonna work or not. Let's try it. What what do we got to lose, right? It can always not work. Let's sketch on this bottom plane. My my thought is I'm gonna have to do it with lines, but let's see if we can do it with rectangles. 
let's create a let's not create we're going to sketch a two-point rectangle i could have used r on the keyboard and let's start right there and let's come out and my width wants to be comp one width tab and my depth wants to be comp one depth okay and enter okay so now i got a rectangle i can't really shell this i can't really extrude this up and shell it because then my thickness i'm going to have two wall thicknesses at the bottom i could probably go in later and remove that but I'm not really sure that's what I want to do. So let's draw another two-point rectangle. I'm just going to hit R for rectangle. I'm going to put it over there. I'm going to bring it down here. I'm going to lock it in and escape to get rid of our tool. And now I'm going to dimension these things. And I'm going to hit D for dimension. Let's click on this one and this one. And let's make, let's move this over. Let's make this gap. What are we going to make this gap? We're going to make it wall thickness. So hit W, click wall thickness. Let's see if this works. And enter. And we're going to do the same thing over here between these two, here to here. And drag it down here where we are out in the open. And wall thickness. And enter. Now, let's see if we can extrude that up. E. And we just want to bring this up. And how much do we want to bring it up? We want to bring it up a box height. Or do we? Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen because I made my box height from the bottom plane up and I made this compartment from the inside of the box, the floor of the box up, which is two millimeters above the plane height. So you know what I need to do here? Instead of box height, I need to go box height minus two and hit enter. I wonder if I could do box height minus wall thickness. Let's try that. That might be fun. Box height minus wall thickness. Enter. Hey, look at that. That's pretty darn cool. Now you know what will happen. Watch, watch this. This is the really cool part of parametric modeling and using parameters and expressions. Let's come back up to modify and change parameters. Let's see if we can kind of get them so where we can see it all. That might not be possible, but who knows? Now we'll come back and we'll do it later. Let's change our wall thickness from 2 to 4. 2 to 4. And enter. And OK. You notice that this height stayed correct because I made that height, the height of the box, minus the wall thickness. Let's try something else. Let's come to modify and change parameters and let's change the size of our box let's change it from 175 to 150 and let's change the depth from i don't know 75 to 100 and because i named them i know what they all are that's to me one of the cool parts and let's you know what let's change the height as well let's change the height from 30 to 40, 30 to 40, and OK. You notice everything stays correct. I don't have to go back and change a single other dimension because every dimension on here is a part of a parameter. When one changes, they all change, and they're all correct. So pretty much in a nutshell, that's parametric modeling. That's how you use parameters and expressions it can get out, trust me, it can get a lot more complex than that. I look at some of these models people make and I am absolutely lost. But in this one of these next videos where I complete this box, make a lid, we're going to do some joints, we're going to do some components, we're going to get a little bit more advanced, but you'll find out that it really isn't that hard. We might even make a motion study at the end. I think motion studies are really cool. But that's going to be it for today. I am almost at the 15-minute mark. If you have enjoyed this video, if I've helped you out, if you've learned something, please like and subscribe. I have some affiliate links for GearBest down below. If you're looking for something from them, using one of my links won't cost you any more, and it will help me out a lot, and it will keep my Chinese overlords from getting too angry at me. 
Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by and watching. Have a great day. Bye for now.